Hello and welcome to TechSlice. In this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the new features and changes in Android Wear 2.0. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the features. To start off, we'll go through a tutorial. So what you want to do is just swipe up. And we'll go swipe up again. So it's going to show us some of the changes. So that's the new notification style. So we'll tap on it. And you can see some of the information related to the notification. So we'll swipe right to get out. And you press the power button to go back to the watch face. And you can also press it to enter your app screen. And you can see here we've got all our apps. So what you may notice is that the design of the app drawer has changed. So it's gone from having a white background and a few uh, pages you can swipe through to just being a single page with all your apps on it. And you can also see here that it's optimized for round watch faces rather than square watches which were standard for Android Wear when it first released. So you can see it moves very nicely around the face of the watch. And yeah. So if you want to pin an app to the top, say it's all the way down here, you might want to pin your feed, what you do is you tap and hold on the icon, it'll add an, a star beside it and it will pin it at the top of your app drawer. Okay, so aside from the material design of the drawer and your notifications, some of the system apps have also received an update. So apps like um, Alarm for instance, now have a design where you, where you can set the time by pulling this ring over and also once again is designed for a circle watch face. So we'll go back. Apps like Agenda have also received updates. So now follows a blue black style. Um, even the Huawei apps. So if you look at heart rate you can see it's got this new design. Um, Works the same, but it's just got an updated design. As well as apps like Timer and Stopwatch, they also have a circular ring design. So another thing that's changed is how you access the app drawer. So you saw in the tutorial, it asks you to press the power button to enter the app drawer. And if you've used Android Wear 1.5, you, you would know that you could also swipe across to access your app drawer. However, in Android Wear 2.0, doing that will just enter your watch faces. So, the only way from now on will be to press the power button. That's your primary access for the app drawer. And if you want to change your watch face easily and quickly, you swipe across and you can add more watch faces through this menu. So let's go with this one here called Elements Analog. So a new feature in Android Wear 2.0 was complications and complications are these little icons on your watch face. So you can see we've got one for our date, we've got one for our battery, we've got another time zone, in this case it's London, and we've also got a calendar event which is up next. And tapping on these will take you to the relevant app. So you can see my the agenda app has opened for my calendar events. If we tap on battery, nothing happens, there's no app for it. If we tap on date, it'll open the agenda again. And if we tap on time, you can change the time zone. So let's go Australia, and we'll go Sydney. Here you go. Okay, so let's talk about notifications. In Android Wear 1.5, you have the app peaking feature. So it would display a little bit of a notification, say a calendar event would show the event, and how long left until that event. However, in Android Wear 2.0, that feature is gone, 
and if you want it, you can use these complications on your watch face. So, let's take a look at these new notifications. So, swiping up will display all your notifications. You can see they've been redesigned with the material design in mind. You can see the, we've got our large icon, we've got a smaller app icon, as well as some text. So, for instance, if you got a message from Allo, you can tap on it, and it will display more information from that message you received. You can also reply to it with three options now. So you have voice input, you can draw an emoji, so let's go. And you just hit the tick, it'll send. And you also have your final new input, which is a keyboard. So this is, um, as the display is really small, it's not the best thing to type with. However, there is the option to do swiping. So, here you go. It's pretty useful. Um, that way, if you're in a quiet room, you don't have to use voice commands. So it's always nice to have that extra option. You can also send a reply, obviously, by just tapping the icon below the notification. So swiping down will get you to your control center. You can now see that it's just one page instead of the multiple pages for each icon. So you can see we've got airplane mode, sound, brightness, do not disturb, and settings, as well as your battery and date. So in the brightness, we've got the option to turn it up, turn it down, and turn on theatre mode. So now let's take a look at the Play Store. So we'll open it up. And here you are. So you can see we've got a few main categories. So there's recommended, featured apps, watch faces, and complications, which were mentioned previously. So if we go in here, we'll be able to see a bunch of different apps that will allow complications. So, let's say you want the weather channel, just tap on it, go install. It'll start downloading the app, we'll go back, and we'll take a look at it once it's done. So in this menu, you can see the apps on your phone, which you can install on your watch. So, you can see here we've got apps like Advanced Settings, Motorola Connect, Google Play Music, Maps, Notepad, Papercraft, Spotify, and some other watch faces. And you can just tap the install icon to install them. Or you can tap on the icon and go install. So this is similar to the phone's play store where you can scroll down and you'll see some screenshots of the app. You can scroll through them. Can't seem to go full screen though. You can see some review highlights as well as more info. So this will give you the version who's selling it, and a developer email. So let's go back. So the final thing we'll take a look at is Google Assistant. As this is Android Wear and it's based on 7.1.1, you have the Google Assistant built into Android Wear. So to get to Google Assistant, what you do is you hold in the power button, And so it's the first time that you've opened Assistant, you'll get this little page of all the things you can ask Google Assistant to do. And you can also activate Assistant by saying, OK Google, and there you go, it'll pop up and you can ask it a question. So just like on the phone, you can ask Assistant to do things like text James. And it'll ask you if you've got multiple numbers for this contact, you will have options to select the right number. Then you just speak your message. So 
there you go uh, it will recognize what it thinks and then you can just hit send and it will send the message so you can also ask things like what's the weather like right now and there you go we've got our weather pretty good um, so you can see you've got temperature, times, the forecast, and you can go see more on weather.com. So to access a watch face's settings, you can either swipe across, hit the settings icon, or you can hold in, and it will access the settings. So for this, this watch face, you can set a background image. So we'll go general, element art, and you can see it's set a wallpaper. Let's take a look at the complications. To edit them, you can go into data, and you can see the options. So currently we have set a world clock, calendar, or the date, battery, as well as your events that are up next. So tapping on it, you can see, you can see other apps that have, that can provide complications. So let's say you wanted to access your music you could choose Google Play Music, tap it, and from now on, you've got a quick launch for Google Play Music. So you tap on it, and Google Play Music will launch, and you'll see your music if you have any. So in the future, more apps will more than likely start supporting complications, and they'll become very useful for you. So let's now take a look at settings. So going to settings, you can see from now on it's categorized, which is very useful. So we've got display, sound and notifications, apps, gestures, connectivity, accessibility, personalization, and system. So taking a look at display, you can change your watch face, adjust the brightness, change the font size, as well as enable or disable always on screen. In sound and notifications, you've got options to change the media volume, the alarm volume, ring volume, um, change vibration, ringtone, as well as notification previews and do not disturb options. In here, you have all your apps. And this is a new feature, so if you tap on an app, you've got the option to uninstall it, force it to stop, You've got its permissions, advanced, and in app info. So you can see all the data, and you can see advanced settings, which are disabled. In the permissions, you can see what um, an app would need access to. So there you go. So the message app now has material design, and you can see um, you can send messages by going tapping this icon you've got the option to send canned messages you've once again got your three input options and swiping up will allow you to call people view the people in the conversation delete the last message or delete the conversation entirely that's the messages app of course seeing we have a speaker you can make phone calls so thank you for watching, be sure to like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you next time.